So thank you, Dr. Fontos, and thank you everybody at uh, Merrill Academy, and thank you for giving us this opportunity. We here as uh, we have this uh, Tavi case for all of you, and uh, here is a hard team. On my left is Dr. Ajit Bana. He is chairman Hello, of Cardiac good morning. Sciences and uh, chief cardiac surgeon. On my right is Dr. Sanjeev Sharma. He is a director of interventional cardiology, and here is Dr. Pawan Mehta, our cardiologist. And then we have our nursing team, and you know. You see Sanjeev there, the person behind Meryl, my valve. And we have Imran, the guy who loads it properly, and that's why the valves go perfect. And we have Dr. Navneet Mehta, who's our head of cardiac anesthesia. And let me tell you, all our cases which we do here is conscious sedation, and that is because of his excellent guidance. We have Dr. Heman Chaturvedi on the echocardiogram. So let me uh, introduce the case. Let's go to the slide, please. So he's a 73-year-old uh, gentleman, had prior CABG with Lima to LED, vein graft to OM, a vein graft to PDA, severe COPD, had progressive symptoms and uh, was admitted with class 4 three weeks ago, was optimized and now is in class 3. His 2D echo showed severe aortic stenosis, aortic valve area of 0 0.4, mean gradient of 30, peak gradient of 62, dimensionless index of 0 0.11, serum creatinine of 1.3, and his EF was 30%. Next slide, please. So his STS score is 5.74 for mortality. Next slide, please. This is the echo still film, which clearly shows heavily calcified aortic valve. Next slide. These are the gradients at baseline, and his aortic valve area was 0 0.44 centimeters square. His mean gradient was around 26, peak of around 50. Next slide. So we did a low-dose dobutamine stress echo, and you can clearly see his mean gradient, 1 deptil, 52.7, peak gradient of 82.6, aortic valve area decreased to 0 0.295. Next slide, please. We did a CT scan as per, uh, I'm not going to go into the protocol, but here you can see the uh, coronary height, they don't matter anymore because the vein grafts and lima is patent. The area of the annulus is 470 millimeter square. Next slide, please. This is the uh, CT scan, you can clearly see. You have a short axis and a long axis, not much of calcium at the annulus, some calcium at the annulus, but heavily calcified leaflets. LVOT and ascending aortic dimensions are there. Next slide. Again, a root analysis. Next slide. This is the femoral. You see the right common femoral artery, 8.5, 8.9, 9.7. Next slide. This is the tortuosity. You can see both are equally tortuous, but the right, is, right side vessels are bigger than the left side vessels. Next slide, please. So uh, the sizing of my valve, which is a balloon expandable valve, is done based on the area. So uh, the sizing, this valve fits into a 26 millimeter valve, and 26 millimeter valve is 12% oversize, and I think that is an adequate oversize for the balloon expandable valve uh, in this particular patient where there is not much of calcium in the LVOT or there is not heavy calcium at the annulus, though the leaflets are calcified. Maybe we can have your opinion on that, uh, Dr. Fontos and other panelists and chairperson there. Next slide, please. Next, next slide. So uh, what we can do is we can go to what all we have done. So our plan here is the, what we notice in today's echo, morning echo, is we suspected some LV apical clot. And this was shown by our um, echocardiographer. So our plan was we decided to put two spider filters in both the carotids from the left femoral artery. We have a left femoral vein uh, where the pacemaker is going on. We have decided to do the TAVI from the right side. We have done, you can focus here. We did, yeah, you can show more of the screen and not our faces, please. Yes, so you, you can see uh, we put three proglides here. We put an 18 French sheet and we have upsized to a 22 French sheet. Left side, you see two six French femoral arteries and a six French femoral vein. In the left radial, uh, we have a six French sheet and a pigtail going from the left radial. So our plan is to put a 26 millimeter valve. Our plan is to put a 26 millimeter valve. Uh, and uh, now let us start from the first slide, please. Can you show the uh, c scene minus? Yes, yeah, show the femoral angiogram. So we did a four, four French micropuncture axis in the right femoral artery. Here you can see it is in the center of the common femoral artery. We put three proglides. Next slide. So this is a, a catheter uh, which is there in the right uh, common carotid artery. Next slide, please. We put a six French JR guide. Next slide. Put a seven O spider. Next slide. Next slide. Yeah, next, next, next. 
ne you can see next. So there's a seven of spider from the right into the carotid artery. Next slide. Next. This is the left side. Next. Road map. Next slide. Next. Next. Another seven of spider filter in the left common carotid, left internal carotid artery. Next one. Next. We put a pigtail. Uh, next one. Next. We put a pigtail from the left radial non coronary sinus, and this is our uh, root angiogram. You can see the pigtail is in the right coronary sinus. Uh, there is a heavily calcified uh, right coronary sinus leaflet. You can see that chunk of calcium, and then uh, the left sinus. All three of the cusp are in a straight line. Next one. Next. This is an AL1, the cross. We made sure that we don't touch the apex because even there is a suspicion, uh, but never showed up in our CT scan, which was done two weeks ago. Next one. This is an, we decided to use a Lunderquist wire in this particular patient is uh, for two particular reasons. One, we don't want to take support of the LV apex when we are advancing a catheter. We, we want to keep this wire in the mid cavity and the loop of a double curve Lunderquist wire is big so that it's going to stay in the uh, mid cavity. This is just what we are hoping. Next one. Next. This is a pre dilatation mammoth balloon, which is again from the Merrill Life Science. Next one. It is a truly non, uh, truly non compliant balloon. And uh, we use a 20 millimeter balloon to pre dilate. Next one. Let us see the hemo so, next one. So now this is where we are. We have our 22 French sheath in the right groin. We have two spider filters in the, com in the internal carotid artery. We have a pigtail from the left side. And. Uh, we have already done a pre dilatation with 20 mm balloon. So, um, uh, let us have an input. Uh, uh, I mean, let, let, what do you think? Let us have an input from the panelist. What are your opinions? You want to ask a question to our surgeon, anesthetist, echocardiographer. Heyman, can you folks show us some echo views, please? Yeah. But this camera will yeah. not. Can you, can you focus on the echo? The other knee cam. Not sir? Okay, okay. Yeah, 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 him and keep going. You can see this is, yeah, next one. Next, next, you can see the wire in the LV. Next, next one. These are the uh, next one. Next slides, okay. Some TR, next one. This is the aortic regurgitation post balloon dilatation. Show us the hemodynamic tracings, please, Anand. The gradients. All right, yeah. so, so if you all agree, we are ready to go with our valve, and then probably we can have a discussion after the valve deployment. Okay, Is that okay? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to go ahead with our valve. Ready. Ready. Go ahead. So Dr. Sanjeev is checking the orientation. Do you want to comment on the skirt is ventricular? No, no. Radio. Yeah. So you can see the skirt here. The skirt is ventricular. We want to make sure it is facing in the right direction. All right, let's go ahead. Some. May I ask you a question? You're going to talk about some very interesting things. So you might, yeah. So you might be wondering, you know, there are so many catheters up there in the arch. We have a, we have two guide catheters, a pigtail in the arch, and uh, this this uh, whole thing might interfere with the arch. But I'm going to show you. I mean, uh, as you might Bad be aware of it, there's very interesting property of the navigator where we can flex it, and it's going to stay away from the arch. So let us see how it goes. Okay. So holding on the wire. Okay. Don't push on the catheter. And Dr. Bana, you want to open the sheet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So a wire is most, yeah, open it up. Make sure the wire doesn't come out. Okay. We're going to go ahead. Make sure the wire, yeah. Wire push. Wire, yeah. Little, Sanjeev, little. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, Pavan, push your wire a little. Yeah, that's good. Bus. Okay. So what we're going to do here is, let us go LAO. See the arch. LAO. Show us the arch and the wire both. So mag. Okay. Okay. You want to advance. So here is the navigator flexion thing. I'm going to flex it as it goes across the arch. Mag down, mag down, please. Arch, arch, sure. Arch, arch and the wire and the catheters. Go ahead. Okay, give me one minute. See how it, how it, uh, because of the navigator flexion, it is deflected away from the uh, outer curve of the arch. And I think that's a very important, uh, go ahead. That's a very important property because. As we know that most of the strokes happen, can happen when we are crossing the arch. Okay. So you saw how it never even touched those catheters 
and everything remains stable. Floro save, please. Okay, so let's come to the deployment angle before we cross. That is LAO 11 and cranial 1. LAO 11, cranial 1. Cranial 1. Okay, I think that's our angle, right? Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead, mag up. Yeah. So you can see how, how that uh, the entry into the left ventricle is so uh, oblique. Let us see. Yeah, let's go and push it in. Let us see if we are able to enter the valve. Yeah, go ahead, push, push, good. Push more, push more, push. Okay, push, push. See how horizontal it is. Push, push, push. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, push, push. Okay, so we'll what we'll do? We'll come back again. Uh, hold on, hold there. We'll try to flex it more. Okay, let us go in now. Go in, go. Check the valve. Yeah, hold, hold it there. Perfect. Just pull back, pull back, pull back, pull back, pull back. Okay, that's good. So we're going to unflex it here. Floro, save that, please. Let us take a picture here. Okay. Inject. Injection. Yeah. What do you think about the So I think we are good here, but see how how this is so more candid, more towards ventricle. We are yeah. more so, in ventricle. So we're good here. We are good. I think. Let's take one more picture. Ready? Yeah. So the way we want to position here, we want to position that our black dot, the center marker, is at the annulus or just above the annulus. And uh, sometimes we see a dark band, and that should. I think I'm I'm happy. What do you think, Sanjeev? Yeah. This is good actually. So I'll, I'll hold here. We might do uh, some adjustments on the fly. Dr. Sanjeev is going to inflate. So we'll wait for the pressures to come down. OK, I'm, I'm going to give some commands. Pace at 180, please. 180. OK, pressure is low. Begin inflation. Begin inflation. Very nice. Begin inflation. Fully inflate. Fully inflate. Fully inflate. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Deflate. 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 Okay, stop pacing now. Floro save. Heyman, we'll unflex it and we'll come out. Heyman, let us give some give some blood pressure support medicines. Let us keep our wire in. Wire wire in. Yeah. We have unflexed it. Make sure you unflex it before you fully. Okay, Heyman, let us see the echo. Pressure is coming up. Yeah. Pressure is coming up. Show us your mean gradient. Show us how much AR you have. So you know, uh, if I look at the hemodynamics, my blood pressure is 54. I think I'm I'm okay with the at least uh, pressure dressings. Mean pressure gradient five. Okay, you can see on the echo, uh, Hemant is a very good friend of ours, and you know he never gives a mean gradient in double digits post hour. <laughs> so we have a mean gradient of five. Okay, Hemant, how much AR do you see? Do you see any AR? So uh, you can see the echo on your screen, right? We have a wire. We still have a wire across. So uh, I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to take a picture without a wire here. So let me take out my wire. We can always re-enter. There's no significant AR here. And I'm going to remove my pigtail as well. Let us see. OK, ready with injection? So come caudal. Come to, go cranial. Let's remove the parallax. Cranial, please. Cranial, 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 cranial. Nice. Hmm. Show us the LV. Give us a good injection, 15 ml per second, total of 20 ml. Ready? Yeah. Ready? Inject. No, yeah. I think that's a good. Uh, we can do one more injection, you know, if you if you are not happy with the contrast volume, we can we can give a good uh, give a, give a good 15 ml, uh, you know. I don't want to decrease the AR by giving less volume, so let us give uh, increase the PSI, maybe around 700, 15 ml per second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Increase that. And diastolic yes, is closer yes, to yeah, 70. Yeah, yeah, I think we're good. Ready, Anand? Ready, sir. Okay. Inject, please. 
Ну и. What do you think? Hi, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you now. What do you think? Okay, This is a fine angiogram. We don't see any AR. Yeah, I think the result. Yes, hi, hi, Giza, Dr. Giza, how are you? I am fine. I am very happy to see this patient, and I'd like to very honestly congratulate to this patient for several reasons. Thank you so much. First of all, I was very happy to see that very so cor correct uh, examination of the patient, the diagnostic protocol, even with uh, con uh, with uh, the Straxaho to to show us the myocardial reserve uh, that the patient that have. Mm -hmm. Which is very rare thing to to see. Thank such you so much. So su such a correct diagnostic yeah. protocol. So congratulations to that. And also, I'd like to congratulate mm -hmm. to this patient because this was a real life patient. Uh, Uh, not a highly selected patient for uh, for a live case. And the ECG is absolutely normal, no cure, broad QRS. Yeah. So no With a very small aortic valve Thank area. you so much, uh, Dr. Excellent Giza. Excellent calcification, so congratulations. If, if you can... Thank you so much. So if we, if we have some time, we would like to... Cho yeah, so if, if we have some time, you know, we would like to focus on a few more things. One is ECG. A PV patient does, does not have any widening of QRS. There is no change in ECG at all. And this is what we have seen in, uh, I think it's too early for us to really comment, but we haven't seen any complete heart blocks with this valve. The second thing is uh, uh, the gradients. Most of our gradients are in single digit. And I think we have time. What we'll do is we'll talk to the patient, make sure there is no neurological damage. We'll, re we'll retrieve our filters from the carotid. And we'll also deploy the proglides. And I think we have time. We can show the uh, final femoral angiogram as well. Uh, So, uh, any? I think we'll go ahead with that. Any qu any other questions? I think we're gonna have several questions. So let, us, let us remove this. So sir. I'd like to ask our panel members to yes. answer questions. It seems to be very active. Thank you very much. It's very interesting case. Uh, I have a question about these uh, protection devices, carotid protection devices. Uh, there are a few trials yes. that yes. Uh, yes. inform us that there is no evidence to use them why you use or it's your uh, own research work why you use uh, these protection devices <coughs> yeah yeah so so i i agree with you uh, we here we don't use protection device as a routine practice uh, it's only in two cases we have we, where we have used it and both the cases we suspected an lv apical clot so i mean we tried anticoagulation also for four weeks but what we have seen is in the first patient not in this this we came to know today only Uh, why the uh, apical clot does not dissolve is because until the AS is not relieved, there, there will always be a stasis of blood in these patients with poor LV. So we have used filters only in patients where we suspected and in one of the patients actually had LV apical clot. Uh, otherwise, no, we are not using it routine. Now coming to the, uh, the Sentinel trial as well, there was no statistical difference. I mean, you know that. But still, it got an FDA approval uh, just because the judges on the pan judges there wanted a device in their carotid when they are undergoing a tower. So I think uh, that is what we believe we we are not using as a routine practice in it. What is your practice? We don't use uh, the protection devices. Uh, and in your in your experience, you you found something some plug in the protection device or no? Okay, so what we'll do here, we'll go ahead and retrieve our filters. Do you want to, want to ask a question to our surgeon? So, uh, let me tell you, we uh, here as a team, we have been doing all our TAVIs uh, together, and our team is almost all 99.9% .9 is the same team which works on all the patients. And I think that is very, very important uh, to really have a good outcome, a proper assessment by the anesthetist, proper assessment by the surgeon. We also have, let me, let us focus on the ECMO machine. Focus on the ECMO, please. Yeah, there one. They're behind. So Dr. Bana would like to comment why we have ECMO always ready in our cath lab. Uh, my, uh, I'm not sure whether you, my mic is working. Your mic is working, I think, sir. Mm. Dr. Bana. Yeah, good morning. Uh, but we have not seen any patient crashing in uh, cath lab, but we have a uh, ECMO machine standby and if any case the sheets can be converted into cannula then we can put patient on ECMO and take to theater for any catastrophe and one more important thing when a, there is a heart team we can 
evaluate patient uh, properly and brain, we offer brain, them brain. in Carotid. our center we offer them a surgical avr routine surgical avr suture less and transcatheter aortic valve as per the need of the patient so there is no uh, tug of war in between the cardiologists surgeons everyone so there is absolutely a hard team approach that's why our results are very good and and you know let me let me ask a comment from dr sanjeev sharma he is a direct you don't have mic okay so uh, Dr. Sanjeev is a director of intervention cardiology here, and uh, uh, so sometimes you know uh, we we do these uh, complex cases where we have to do a PCI and a TAVR. So uh, how, let me ask you, Dr. Giza, what do you what do you do if you have a complex CAD in a patient who is a uh, who who is a candidate for TAVR? Yeah, it's a very good question. There are at least three approaches. You can do a PCI before the TAVI. You mm -hmm. can do it just at the same setting, or mm -hmm. you can do it after. Or you can decide not mm -hmm. to do anything. Just mm -hmm. do the PCI uh, ischemia-driven mm -hmm. after the procedure. Our approach is to do the PCI mm -hmm. uh, before the TAVI, at least a, a couple of days before the TAVI. A uh, um, couple of days. A couple of days before. So or have or you have you uh, done any piece? Yeah. So you know sometimes we we came across a patient who had bad CAD, and now the uh, the confusion which sometimes happens in the mind is, uh, patients with severe aortic stenosis. When you do a complex CAD, uh, they are at risk for hemodynamic compromise, uh, fluoro save that. So do you do a BAV for these patients when you are doing a, a PCI, or you just do the PCI? We have done some with the critically ill patients, basically those patients who were in the intensive care unit mm -hmm. and we had to do something. So it, it happened, but less than five times, and we had to do a BAV and uh, do the coronaries in the same setting. But if the patient is stable, then we prefer doing, it. even if it's a she left main, brain. we do even the left main before doing the TAVI. And if the patient is stable, then we do it without okay. uh, BAV. Cerebral, DSA, DSA of the brain. Yeah. Brain, brain, please. So we, had, we have removed the filters. We are taking a DSA of the cerebral circulation. Go ahead, show us the brain, please. Mag down, and then we'll deploy our proglides. Okay, so let us see. DSA, please, DSA, please. Yeah, we are off fluoro. Always do a brain angio after Tavi? No, 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 not always. No, in this particular patient, you know, as I said, this patient has an LV apical clot, and uh, we just removed the spider filter. So we we don't have Sentinel device in India. No. This is just for this one particular patient. We are doing it. Show us the brain. So we we also have a neuro interventionist in our hospital because you know I. My understanding only goes to the main branches, not beyond that. So, so I think it looks good. All big vessels are flowing. So we'll remove the catheters from here. And we'll remove pacemaker on table. And now we'll, now time to deploy our proglides. So show us, show me the groin. Groin, groin, pelvic vessel. We'll, remo we'll leave one, one there. What, what yeah. did you say, may I ask, for so the, the shield size was 22 or 24 French? Sorry. So this is, this is a 22 French sheath 22. here. Give me a dilator, please. Sorry. 22 French sheath. One second. We just got, give, huh. give us a dilator, please. So, so this is very important, you know, how, how uh, we remove these big sheaths from the groin. Give us a dilator, please. Blue one, huh? Sorry. So it's, it's very important that you, you have a stiff wire inside the artery and then you want to put a dilator inside. The reason you want to put a dilator is, suppose if there is any pelvic perforation, anything, you can always push your sheath across that perforation and you can have some time to fix it. So we are putting a dilator, show us the sheath tip. Show us the sheath tip. Groin, groin. Sheath tip, sheath tip. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sheath. She tips. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So one second. Yeah, you can open that. And now what we'll do is, and then you you should always have your pressure monitoring on. 
where is the pressure? So this pressure is coming from the sheet. I'm going to stop this. We're going to connect it to the pressures. Flush, please. Flush. OK, that's fine. So we, the pressure should always be on. And uh, once we come out to the uh, out of this abdominal aorta into the external iliac artery, we'll take one small picture, make sure there's no uh, perforation or no damage happening to the common iliac artery there. Let's take a picture here. Sir. This one, this one, right there. So show me up, show me up. Yeah, yeah. That's good. So nothing in the common iliac artery. So we'll go ahead and deploy a proglide. Let us see. Yeah, come down. Give me red gauze, please. The center one first. This is first, second, third. Third. Yeah. So, so here, focus here, please. So we have three proglides. We'll pull all the blues together first. And then, yeah, just fix the white one. This is white. Mm -hmm. so, gonna, so this is again, you don't pull the white thread, you pull the blue thread. Because the, if you pull the white thread, the knot gets locked. OK, so you can no, no, yeah, you this is white. Yeah. 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 You can, yeah this, you can you can focus this in. Yeah. We loosen it. Lose karna sir. Okay. All right. So we can. So uh, what we'll do is give me a knot pusher. Yeah. So you, you are ready to pull it out. Yeah. Pull the sheath out. Pull it out. Nice. Leave it. Leave it, sir. Let us deploy. Hold some pressure. Pressure. Leave it, leave it. Pull this. Pull both of them. So this is the uh, third one. We're trying to deploy our third probe light. What we have done is sometimes, you know, we leave the wire in place. Suppose you need a fourth probe light. These are big uh, sheets. So suppose if you need a fourth probe light, we also go ahead and deploy a fourth probe light as well. So let us see how it looks. So we still have a wire in place. So one of the sutures broke. It's yeah. okay. It's okay. Yes. card then? Yes. See the card then? Okay. So let us see. Is there any pulse style flow? So we don't see any pulse style flow. What we'll do? And we can take, uh, this is the, yeah, give me one minute. So this is our second one. Okay. We'll take one more picture and then we'll pull out, pull out the wire. Okay. Let's take a picture, right groin 48 DSA. Let's take one picture, sir. Show me the JR there. Show me JR. So our pressure is still the same. That's important. We more inject, inject, inject. Okay. So let's take a DSA. Ready? Inject. Yeah. We are so fine. that's our post uh, proglide. What do you think? I think we can. We are ready to pull out a wire. I don't see any distraction. There is some narrowing, which is fully acceptable. Yeah, so at, uh, I, I personally don't do it. Uh, what do you think? I, I mean, we, we don't do anything for that? No, I think it's perfectly acceptable result. Okay. Yeah, you you cannot have better even with the surgery. Yes, yes, yes. So especially yeah. that you So you can see here, that's a minimalistic TAVI. Yeah. Yes. So. 
we have that's a minimalistic tavi conscious sedation pro glides the sheath is out temporary pacemaker is out the pigtail is out and we are done from our side any questions okay is it possible for you to to stay with us for a couple of minutes for having questions theek hai yeah we are we are okay. here we are here for all your questions okay so i'd like to congratulate again it was a very complex case from you put it from here in wapi it looked a straightforward case but uh, those physicians who have done tavis focus on echo also echo please show us can, the echo can recognize that this was a very complex case ab gardan hilaiye theek hai thank you so much theek hai okay so let, let me show you the post uh, tab let me show the echo before you guys go offline show us the echo please yeah so that's that's the echo show us the parasol yes so that's post procedure you don't see any leak there and, and i think that's very good himan yeah, thank is, you so much it is just perfect thank you very so, much so thank you so thank you so much yeah. thank you everybody thank at papi and thank you so much can we still have some questions you. to you what will be uh, yes, yes, the yes. duration of the staying in the hospital for this patient this current patient so sorry, sorry can you can you say that again what would be the duration the the time of staying in the hospital for this patient so for us we have discharged them on the third day uh, for him i i i want to send him home day after tomorrow because right now he is not on any support we did not give him any ga he does not have a endotracheal tube in place and we don't have any problem with the valve deployment there is no perivalve leak uh, no complete heart block So I think he's going to stay in ICU for one day. Tomorrow he's going to stay in room, walk around, and day after tomorrow he'll be home. So 24 hours you keep the patient in the ICU for telemetry and for checking the ECG. Yes, yeah, so you know, you know, yes, no, yeah, no. Our patients, you know, compared to the West patients, our patients love to stay in hospital. You know, they 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 get that feeling yes, they got something done. If they're going to go home after 24 hours, they'll feel that there was nothing which was done. So. No, they they love to stay in hospital for a couple of days extra. They'll always ask a doctor, "Why don't you keep me for one more day?" <laughs> so, uh, yes, but no, no particular medical okay, reason as such. That. Yes. May I ask you, what was the temporary wire you used? Was it the balloon tip or uh, just a regular? Yes, balloon tip. We all, it's a balloon tip pacemaker. We always use a balloon tip pacemaker. But what what we do here in our center is, we inflate a balloon. We reach the RV apex. we check our uh, uh, parameters and then actually we deflate it the reason is no. sometimes if you leave the balloon inflated it can just float up when you are trying mm -hmm. to deploy your mm -hmm. valve yeah, so we 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 deflate it actually and you have good experience because the other company who sells the uh, balloon inflatable <laughs> valves suggests to use a, a regular uh, temporary pacemaker wire for more stability Yes. So I I agree completely with you. Yeah. Can you can we you use, repeat that again? We use all our procedures with yeah. the temp, uh, with the balloon tip wire because it's much safer. I have never seen a ventricular yes. perforation with a balloon tip you know, wire. I I, I I I totally agree with you. You know, in the past when we were using a non-balloon pacemaker, and you all, everybody must have experienced in fear of all MIs, you put a pacemaker, uh, you are happy. Third day when you remove the pacemaker, they develop tamponade. Yeah. So yes, uh, uh, the way we don't see any perforations with balloon tape, and I think that is the main utility of this pacemaker, is to decrease, decrease the uh, RV perforations. And your experience is that it's stable enough for for 100% capturing. Uh, any ex if the capturing is not 100%, is that your question? Yeah, the question is whether uh, the balloon tape pacemaker, that. the position of the balloon tape pacemaker, is in your opinion. in the way you do it with deflated balloon stable enough for for the balloon expandable valve implantation yes yes okay i'm happy to hear that so uh, you know what yes yeah, so so what what we do is i think that's a very important question your your question is uh, how do you make sure that your capturing will be uh, throughout when you are doing a tower balloon expandable valve and yep. uh, there is no failure to capture so we haven't seen it but what we do is we try to test this during our balloon aortic dilatation pre dilatation we do a rapid uh, test of the pacemaker 
there are some centers who use a temporary screw in lead uh, we don't use it mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes in a difficult position when the patient has severe tr and the tricuspid leaflet tricuspid uh, uh, the severe tr what we use is we can also we have used a mullein sheath actually <coughs> a mullein sheath if you place into the rv it can okay. keep the pacemaker lead stable in patients who have uh, tricuspid regurgitation and if there is an issue with the uh, uh, with the stability of the lead so it's a good idea to use a screw in temporary lead we don't use it we don't have it here but some centers what they do is they uh, use a permanent pacemaker uh, fix and lead mm -hmm. so i think that that one can use it but we, we don't use it anyway okay. so for our experience we have been doing okay with all our balloon tip pacemaker leads we haven't had any problem with capture uh, failure to capture or we haven't had any problem as of now touch wood thank god that uh, any balloon or valve has embolized. So this is what I would like to say. I, I agree with you completely. In the beginning, we used uh, regular temporary wires. Oh, yeah? And we had yeah. at least. Sanjeev, we are offline. We're done? Yes. Chaloji. Thank okay. you so much. Bye. Chalo, Great show.